I am very excited to bring on one of my favorites, my personal friends. Uh, she is a wonderful photographer. You guys all know her. Uh, we've had her several times here on Creative Live, and we're excited to watch one of her segments next. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Bambi Cantrell. Bambi, so good to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's so nice to see you, Russ. Likewise, likewise. So tell us a little bit about the, um, the courses that you did in Photo Week. Oh my goodness. These are, by the way, two of my very favorite programs that I've ever done. Um, the first one was about making big prints and working with your, your personal printers. Like I use the Epson 9900 printer. And two of the things that I taught in that first course were things that I do on a regular basis. Um, one of them is how to create really beautiful, elegant greeting cards or promotional cards to send to clients. And this is, this is exactly what one of them looks like. And oh, can you hold this it up might, a little bit higher? Up can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, this is one of the ones that I did for, um, uh, for new moms or for, to send out to doctors. I have um, an OBGYN that I work with and I give him gift cards and this is the gift card. Actually, hold it on the other side of your face. There you go. And up see a little bit there? more and closer to your face. Perfect. There you go. Okay. And then I don't know if you can tell, but it has it's raised off the paper. The little photograph is, and then I've hand deckled the um, the edge, and then I've added a little bit of gold gilding. And then on the inside is just printed a very elegant little um, gift card message. My doctor gives these out to his patients, and this brings me new clients. Um, so anyway, this is one of the things that I showed how to do in that first course. The second thing that I showed how to do was working with encaustics. Now, encaustics are, it's when you pour like hot wax on top of a, uh, to a photograph. And my goal is to create a variety of different kinds of products for clients. Um, I don't want to give the impression that I, oh, that I do all my own printing because I don't. Right. I use Bay Photo. They do an amazing, amazing job. But for those times when I want something that's a little bit different that they don't offer, like like the encaustic process, um, I'm going to do that myself. And then this is kind of an example of what I might do. Again, I do uh, the gilding on the edge of the prints. It's mounted on a board. Like you see, I'm actually currently working on this piece. So these are two of the, um, two of the how to's on that first segment. The second segment is on posing for families and I love this particular segment because my style in photographing families with children is very different. It's um, my goal is to make the experience so much fun that the children want to be photographed. And so we do all kinds of crazy things. Like I have them jumping on the couch and, and playing around because it's important that they buy into the experience. And so I show you some of my favorite tricks for, for taking interesting um, captivating family portraits that aren't your run-of-the-mill kind of images that you can get anywhere. That's awesome. I mean, it, that's one of those things that uh, we hear constantly is the need to stand out. And what you're doing with the the, um, the Prince one is making images that are art, that are, you can't just go to Costco and get a print of that. You cannot you know, get that effect. It is so much more important now than ever before for us in the professional arena of photography to differentiate ourselves from anyone with a camera, with a point and shoot, you know, just anyone with a camera. Because let's face it, cameras are great these days. Mm -hmm. So we have to do things that are a little bit different. And I pride myself and I like that. I like the challenge of creating a variety of different kinds of products um, to make my company stand out. Yeah, absolutely. And it lets you it lets you bring out the inner artist. I mean, that's why yes. I think a ton of us got into this was because we love art and we are artists. We consider ourselves that. And so being able to actually do that and recognize that as our strength, it's beautiful. And you're giving us a lot of the tools to do that. I love it. Can't wait to see that. Let's talk briefly about some of your previous classes. Now, you have been on Creative Live uh, at least, I think, three times for full for full workshops. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite memories from that? What are, uh, do you have a favorite among the courses um, that you've taught? I will say my personal favorite is the third course, and that's the one that I did here in my studio. I loved that experience because it's one thing to come to the Creative Live Arena and teach a course there, but I feel that when you come to my studio, this is like you were right sitting in my studio seeing what I use on a regular basis and how I work with 
within the confines of the, the studio space that I have. And I think that's part of the secret to my success is the way that I manipulate the scene and use the different environments. Not only that, but one of the other benefits of seeing the studio environment is that a photographer or those that are interested get a, get a chance to see um, other aspects of the photographic business. Mm -hmm. And we did a, a whole segment on the sales process, which was which was priceless and I think really, really important. The other thing that I did that I loved in that course was that I brought in some of my favorite people. We have a couple of local artists and crazy um, uh, design architects in our building that, that were able to give some really quick tips on redefining your space. So it was a, that was my very favorite class. Um, other than that, I've done two courses that dealt with posing. The first one was more wedding oriented. Mm -hmm. And who of us doesn't need to bone up on our posing when it comes to weddings? The second course that I did was more geared towards boudoir photography and gave some very, very, and I was able to give some very specific instruction on posing and lighting specifically. Yeah, I loved coming down to your studio. I mean, it's it's a beautiful space and the way that you had used it and intentionally set it up to be that space where you can shoot, where you can have those sales events. I mean, it really was, uh, it's a different experience, uh, yes. like you said. And so I thought it was amazing. I agree, coming down there was, was fantastic and seeing you work in your natural element was wonderful. So uh, I agree, <laughs> that was a great place to be. Uh, I wish, I hope we can do that again sometime. I um, do too. We, uh, you know, I actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I think that that's to me one of the things that makes that course specifically very unique. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people all the time are asking me, maybe can we come to your studio and we'd like to see what it's like. Well, this is a great way to do it without having to incur any costs. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of those things uh, where, again, seeing somebody working in their natural environment will actually help you to then recognize what am I doing in my space that is different. What can I do, even if I don't have a home stu or an actual studio, what can I do to my home or wherever you're meeting your clients to make it a more welcoming environment, to make it more conducive to a successful experience? And you know, even on that, Russ, one of the things that I did in that last segment is I took the, um, the course um, on a tour of my first space, which was in my home. And so in that first, in this course, I'm able to show you where I used to live. And I come from a very blue collar background, so I don't come from money. And so it's, I was able to give the audience some very, very useful tips on what to do if you have a home studio. Yeah, absolutely. It was a wonderful experience. So uh, folks, check it out if you uh, are interested in being able to actually run a beautiful and effective studio. It was really, really cool. So Bambi, we've been asking a couple questions of everyone and I would love to hear your answers. What are some of the questions that you get asked the most often? I mean, like you said, people write you and wanna come visit. What are the questions people are asking you? Well, it depends on whether it's a photographer or a client. Um, clients want to know, um, sometimes they'll go, um, you know, how much do you charge? And, you know, that's like the big question of the hour. Photographers want to know what F-stop I used, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is kind of funny because it really depends on the situation. Um, and so, but the good thing for photographers, here's my answer. I would say that there is no hard set answer. Um, and I think it's really important for photographers to learn the difference between an F-stop and a bus stop. And I know <laughs> I joke around about that occasionally, but it is so true more today than ever before. Is it important for the photography community, for those out there that are interested in doing this as a profession, to learn their craft? Mm -hmm. Because then you have the ability to manipulate in camera and create images that really scream in your behalf. And then as far as clients, when it comes to, you know, how much do you charge? Um, you know, I, I'm very straightforward. I let them know. I think that it's in their best interest that they pay more to hire me because I'm not one of the least expensive photographers in the, in the universe. But I really believe that, that it's, it's in their best interest to pay more. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, for, for that one, actually owning up to your value and yes. recognizing and telling people, yes, I have value and you're gonna spend more for me and you're going to get more. And that's Absolutely. why you should spend that money. And then I love your, your answer for the photographers because that's what, I mean, that's what we're all about here is learning your craft, learning what you need to do so that you can have an answer no matter what the situation because every situation is gonna be different. Exactly. And you can't, you can't just give a single like, 
this is the f-stop that you should be using. Correct. Because it just light changes. And if you That's don't, true. if you don't understand it, if you don't know an f-stop from a bus stop, then you can't make that decision based on the situation you're in. I love mm -hmm. that. And now let's hear uh, one of the things that we've been asking as well is what y advice you would give to a young Bambi Kentrell who's just starting out. What do you wish you had known when you were starting? Um, it's twofold. The first thing that I would say is I wish I had known that it was okay to make mistakes. However, you use those mistakes as a tool for growth. You don't use it as an excuse for sloppy photography. And, and I find too many folks make excuses for themselves and just think that if they press that shutter enough times that they're going to get a great picture. Well, that may be a happy accident. So I say really work on your craft. And the second, when it, the other thing that I have to say is, and this is the best advice I ever got from anyone, was from Dennis Reggie in 1989 when he said, don't price your services according to what you personally can afford. And before that, I spent the first five years of my career literally starving to death because I was so cheap I could afford to hire myself. Um, so I, once I learned that it was okay for me to charge more, it's, it's not about how much you charge. It's about what you get to keep. And I'm very passionate about the photography community not starving to death and also learning to become profitable and not, not getting yourself into too much debt. And I think that's one of the benefits of the Creative Live experience is that you can gain a very, very high dollar education, um, a very good education with, without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. And I, I truly believe that the best thing that I get to do today, I get to do because I don't have a lot of debt. Um, I'm debt free. My business is debt free, and not that I have every toy known to man. You just need a camera. You need a good lens and a good camera. Buy one. Don't buy into the lie that says you have to have everything to get started. Get be pure, and if you learn your craft, then you can get by with a good camera and a great lens, and maybe a you know a a, a flash or something. Yeah. But you can't do that if you're going to just be you know just shooting and running around and, and not learning your craft. I love that. Thank you so much, uh, Bambi. Very wise words. I love hearing. Um, we hate the idea of the starving artist. It's, it's a, a concept whose time has passed. And I think that uh, folks like you are on the forefront here of teaching and helping people to understand that they don't have to starve and uh, in order to be an artist.